Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. I'm actually a couple of minutes early just to make sure that everything's um, working this time after we had um, a couple of technical glitches last time. So it looks like we're in business. I'm just going to go to the um, new overhead camera. Yay, look, everything's laid out. This is what um, we need today to make our crocus fairy. And of course the crocus fairy is, well, she's somewhere forgot about her where did i put her now um i will find her she's not far but just for for now i'll show you a photo that's the crocus fairy and uh, we're making her from um our february 2023 fairy box crocus fairy i said there wouldn't be any technical glitches and there aren't they're only human glitches today i will find her in a minute um in the meantime um, thank you very much for tuning in. I should also tell you, this is something I show, I show it to you a couple of times. So on Facebook, if you're watching this on Facebook Live, then this will apply to you. If you're watching this anytime on YouTube later on, just ignore what I'm about to say. But we have here on Facebook, there is what is known as a stars system. And you can donate stars to the makers um, if, you, if you like what you see basically and uh, so give us a star if you are um, appreciative of um, our free uh, tutorials that we're doing for you and laying on and um, and then we are all happy that um, that we we um, we get a little bit of um, a financial reward as well however you don't need to do it it's entirely voluntary so we are relying on your goodwill and on your generosity entirely but I want to say thank you in any case I still haven't found that uh, crocus fairy. I know she's here in the room, so I'm going to have to get up and go looking for her. And um, I want to just quickly see who's already in the house so I can say hello. Um, so we have got, let's have a look. We've got Diane. Hi, Diane. We've got Carol. Hi, Carol. Um, yes, I made it back in time because I have been today to a very special place. I will tell you about this a little bit later. Um, Alicia is here as usual. We've got Katerina here um we've got um well there's very few people here at the moment because i'm i'm just a tiny bit early but um do um do keep uh tuned in and um we will get lots and lots of other people joining us no doubt so i wanted to also just tell you a couple of things that are um that are new to the makers so you've are uh, we've we've had all these these troubles with uh, postal strikes and um and parcels not getting to you especially in the uk um, so we have added now into our postal service online DPD. So you now can choose to have your parcel sent by DPD. And I'm looking for the um, crocus fairy now because I know she's hiding here somewhere. So I've always known the crocus fairy is a bit of an imp because she's got elf ears. And so I think she's a bit of a mischievous one and she's playing hide and seek with me. Crocus fairy, where are you? Anyway, do um, use the DPD option because it will only work if lots of you are using it. Otherwise, we have to get rid of it again because we've signed into a contract, which means that we need to use it. Where's the flipping fairy gone? Um, okay, still looking, still looking. I bet I will find her the minute I'm not looking for her. So, um, yeah, I've no idea where I've put her. I know she's in the room here somewhere. But I think she's um, being a little mischievous. Anyway, in the meantime, I'm going to continue with the uh, making of the uh, new Crocus Fairy. Um, because I might as well. So you, you can at least see the fairy. Before I do this, I also want to let you know that it's not long now before the new fairy box is coming out. And uh, this, um, the next fairy in March is going to be the Bunny Fairy. And this one is a is a good little fairy she's not hiding from me and uh, this is the bunny fairy so this is the one that you can make from the box in um, March and she's got a little nest of eggs here colorful spotted eggs and she's got her little Alice band with bunny ears all ready to um, to sit in the grass and wait for the Easter hare and before I um, get too frustrated that I cannot find the um, crocus fairy Dear, oh dear, she must have fallen. Ah, I found her. She's fallen on the floor. More like it, she's hiding on the floor. I knew she was here. There she is. I've got her. Here we go. That's the fairy we're making today. Together. 
Whew, that was close. Anyway, so let's get started. Now, this is might sort of be a little bit of a repetition because I'm doing um, fairies every month and uh, a lot of it is the same concept. So I'm going to race through the bits that um, you're probably familiar with. One of those are that we are cutting our um, flexible steel wire. We love this for its... Um, can you see how it looks sort of almost serrated? Um, we love it for that because uh, the wool does actually stick to it quite nicely. And uh, we're going to cut it so that we've got um, three 15 centimeter lengths. I should also say, if you have the instructions for um, the um, Crocus Fairy, I don't know if you spotted a little mistake at the, on, the, on the front of the page where we say the things that you need. Um, it says there that you need a bowl of warm water. You don't need a bowl of warm water. You don't need a bowl of warm water. What you do, however, need is clear drying glue. Love our stick it. Uh, you will also need um, a pencil. Uh, you need sharp little scissors. And you need a pink uh, f a fine liner if you have sharp little scissors, um, whatever you've got in your stash, or you can, of course, use the ones that we are selling on our website. We've got a, um, a couple of choices there at the moment. And the pencil is mostly to draw onto your felt because you have a, a template to make petals for the crocus flower. Okay, so my three wires are here now. I'm going to move everything out of the way so that I can, especially in this box um, is, is, by the way, the, the template for the wings which you're going to cut around later on and um, fasten onto the back of the fairy. Right, so um, first thing is we need the pink wool, which you have got in your um, fairy box here. This is, this is the Australian um, flesh pink. And um, you take one wire length. So you've got three. One, two, three. You take one wire length and you start wrapping the wool around it. So this is the bit that I'm speeding up a little bit because there are so many videos of um, of how to do this on our um, YouTube channel already. So I'm making the head, but I am speeding this up a little bit. So if you need to slow this down or have um, a more of an explanation, then find another fairy tutorial um, where I'm probably doing this a lot, lot slower. Of course, in your kit, you also get um, your felting needle. So um, that is something that you will use to stub the wool into place um, quite early on as soon as it sort of feels like it becomes a bit unruly stub it down make sure that you only have um, a little ball shape at the end of the wire so stub 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 and because you've bent the wire in it's actually trapped the wool so it shouldn't slip off at all um, as long as you've bent the wool around Sorry, I bent the wire around the wool whilst it's on it and then continue wrapping it. So putting another layer on there and yet another layer. So the, the size of the head um, should be about two and a half centimeters in diameter. Remember, if you're not a centimeter person, don't panic. You don't need to convert anything or run off and um, um, buy um, a centimeter tape measure or a ruler or anything like this. On the left hand side of, of our instructions, on every single page, we have put a tape measure for you. So you can just literally look here on the left, hold it against it, and you know exactly um, what measurements you have got. So um, apologies, but I am not an inches person. I have been brought up uh, with metric measurements and um, whilst I can, I know what four inches are because I'm also a knitter and that's usually the um, four inches is 10 by 10 if you do a four inch square for a tension square oh that noise now I know it's for stars thank you guys whoever did that thank you thank you thank you um, so anyway four inches I know is 10 centimeters for the tension square that um, you have to do when you when you're doing knitting um, but that's that's about it so four inches 10 centimeters I can comprehend that oh and I, I know what 12 inches are because that's the length of a ruler 30 centimeters um, but then everything else means very little to me okay so I'm felting the wool down this is my two and a half centimeter ball shape now here at the end of the wire make sure you felt this down quite well because um, you you uh, want at least 
sort of a quarter of that ball to look really neat and nice and um, smooth because that's going to be part where the face is going to go the rest of it can look messy if you if you uh, can bear that that it's going to be messy underneath the hair um, but other other than that you just need to have um, a quarter of that shape nicely felted so if that helps you to cut a corner then go for it but if you like things done properly then do make sure you felt this down well so once you've got the head you can give it a bit of a wrap between your finger that's often smoothes the wool out a little bit and then you're going to go to your second 15 centimeter length of the flexible steel wire and now we're going to repeat what we did earlier but this time we do want to make it a little bit more delicate so um, you use thinner layers of wool get to the wrap the end of one length and then when you've got it wrapped so i'm noticed that i'm doing this a lot more um, thinner and i'm also doing it tighter because when you get to the end of this you're going to bend the wire in and that will become the little hand so you do want to make sure that you've got a nice neat little end here and then you pull the wool nice and tight and then we're going to continue up the arms so this fairy has got the arms covered in um, in the pink initially not all the not uh, at the very end we are covering another wool over it but for now we're covering this in pink and what you might find is rather than turning the wool over and pulling it tight you can also change the, your um, change the wire around and just twist the wire and let the wool slide through your fingers and that gives it a nice neat finish now you don't want to go all the way to the other end we do need a little gap between um, the two sets of arms and so I'm just going to let the rest of the wool really grip into the wool and then I'm going to repeat this on the other side so with with fairies I know that people say oh mine doesn't look as neat trust me as you get into practicing fairies yours will become neater and neater it requires quite nimble fingers which is a little bit different from maybe what you're used to doing with needle felting um, it can be a bit more slapdash with needle felting in general but with fairies you're gonna have to um, set out with nimble fingers and be quite um, stingy with the amount of wool we are not stingy in the kits but you need to be stingy with the wool that you are applying onto the wire um, so that you get you, you you it's always better less is always more especially with a fairy so I've got a set of arms here this one's slightly shorter I could make it a bit longer by just adding a bit more wool um, I just need about a centimeter in the middle between the two sets of arms to um, to wrap later on around the head uh, wire if you're starting up with a new strand of wool make sure you wrap it in the same direction as the one before and if you are finding it really hard for the wool to stick then you can add a tiny bit of um, glue tiny tiny bit and just let the wool sort of um, glide over it and let it grip into the wool and that will fasten it on as long as you're using clear drying glue obviously don't use super glue doing this because you you will touch it with your fingers um, that's my set of arms done now and um, before I move on to um, anything else I'm gonna see who else has joined us now and uh, we'll say hello to uh, some lovely people here so we have got a um, few more people watching can't actually see how many people are watching but um, we've got Ellie here hi Ellie loved your badger by the way super job um, Gina hi Gina um, hi Lorna hi Vicky um, We've also got um, Rain. Hi, Rain. How are you doing? It's been so long since I've seen a live. I either don't get the notification or I'm just not paying attention to what's in front of me and missing it. Oh, well, we'll, we'll try and remind you every week now. Um, oh, Carol's uh, fairy still needs unpacking somewhere um, and the craft room is not ready to take a fairy yet. Um, Oh, thank you, Diane. It was Diane who sent us um, uh, 50 stars. So thank you for that. You're very lovely. Um, Michelle is here. Hi, Colette. Colette is here too. And um, yes, so let's get back to uh, the fairy in hand. And um, have I got anything else to tell you? Let's have a look. 
Um, yes, I must remind you of the butterfly um, fundraiser that we're doing with the checkered butterfly, which is um, uh, the checkered skipper, I should say. And it, it, the butterfly in true maker style is actually bigger than life size, in case you didn't know that. So you can get your kit from the butterfly conservation. You have to go to um, butterfly conserva butterfly hyphen conservation dot org forward slash checkered hyphen skipper hyphen felting hyphen kit. And basically that will take you straight to the page where you can uh, buy your kit and then we get notification from the butterfly conservation. We actually post the kit. It's our usual high quality and standard instructions and materials inside the kit. And then they're going to do this. And I've, I've only just been told this today. It's going to be a webinar on Zoom that um, uh, is going to be the, the live stream that um, where we make all of this together, when we make our um, checkered skipper together. So it's, it's not um, a Facebook thing. It will be a private um, webinar on Zoom, which then gets recorded. So if you're missing it, you get a link sent to the recording and then you can catch up um, or watch it again if you need to any time after. But the butterfly is probably about that size. So it's larger than life. It's, um, it fits on both of my hands and covers both my palms. So it's definitely larger than life. It's not just a small brooch or life-size butterfly, especially the checkered skipper is quite titch. Okay, let's crack on with um, the legs of the fairy. Um, in fact, in my instructions, it says I'm wrapping the arms around here first. So important is with the fairies that you have the arms and you've got your head and you're actually going round with the arms around the head pipe cleat, uh, the, the head wire. So um, if you find that one arm is shorter than the other, then just wrap the longer arm a bit more and unwrap the shorter arm a bit uh, less. So that this is sort of quite easy to adjust. So make sure you've got two of the same arms and that's now just with one wrap, only one wrap around the top. And I'm going and moving on to the legs now. So in your, um, in your little fairy kit, you have got three color, purples and I think if you love purple this is the kit for you so you have um, you've got a very you've got our dark purple our light purple and you've got our oh now what is it called again what do we call it lilac purple so this is slightly variegated these are just plain plain purple colors but for for um, the um, for the legs that we're starting with the darkest purple so this is the darkest purple which is the dark purple and this is um, our New Zealand Merino. And now you're going to make um, the end wire. You wrap that again as you did before with um, the arms, but this time you're not bending the wire in. So you're actually allowing the wool to slightly overlap the end of the foot. And then you're going up all of the wire all the way to the other end. So my my um, my wire end is here but the wool is ever so slightly over the edge and because I'm going all the way I'm going to turn this whole thing around now and I'm going all the way up now this is not the final cover of the legs either same as with the arms so it doesn't have to be a particular um, thickness just get the wool on there because there's going to be another color going over the top of the legs not the feet but the legs certainly and um, so go all the way up and then at the other end, obviously, you also have to allow the wool to slightly overlap. So make sure that the end of the of the um, wire that you cover is same thickness as it is here. So it's quite thick on this end. So I'm going to make sure that this end is the same because that is the final size of the foot that you're making here. And then as before, just allow the, the rest of the wool to sort of grip into the leg part. Now I'm going to turn this round again because I know I started at this end and um, I, I want to make sure that I don't forget that because I've got to put another layer over the top. But for now you can just fell gently into that very end of the foot where the wool is slightly extending. Turn it on your mat. Turn it. Um, when you get your little fairy kit you get a little a felting mat in there so obviously use that. Um, if you've got, the, if the wool is a bit unruly at the end of your wire, then use a dab of glue because that will just help it to stop messing you around. Just use a dab of glue. It's a bit of a bobbly bit there on my glue bottle. 
and just get it to do what it, you want it to do. So if you've got an extra bit sticking out, cut that off. There. And um, I'm just going to clean the nozzle of my glue bottle because it's, um, it's definitely got a mind of its own tonight. And then do this on the other side. You need tiny, tiny amount of glue. It's just to to stop the, the wool from um, getting loose. Because that's the very tiptoe of the fairy uh, foot. And then you can bend that in half. So there's your legs. And you can also bend the feet ever so slightly in. So you've got little pixie feet here. Just pointy little pixie feet. I love that bit. Look. Dum -da -dum -da -dum -da -dum. Oh, I love making fairies. They make me very happy. I hope you can um, join in that sentiment. And then the, the next bit is what we always do is we also attach the legs to the main wire so that the gap between the top of the legs where you bent it and the bottom of the um, head is about the size of the head itself. So it's about two and a half centimeters in this case. So I've got glue on my fingers. And then all you're going to do is hold it so that you it doesn't slip up or down the wire and then you go round the leg one twist here and then go and come down again and then do it again so two twists around the legs so that they're central and then you've got this extra bit of wire and you can just get rid of that by bending it around the body so just go round and round and round until the wire is um, gone. The wire end is gone. You can go come down again if you want. Um, all of this will be covered with wool. So just make sure that the sharp end is not sticking out at a right angle, but that it's uh, um, facing along the body. And now you've got an extremely skinny fairy and we're going to dress her immediately. Um, and for this, we're actually now using um, the lightest of the three purples, which is the slightly variegated one. So it's not, so this was the dark one, just to remind you, this is the light purple, and this was um, the, the one that we call lilac, and it is slightly variegated, just so that you can differentiate the different colors. And um, you need to now be quite generous and um, with, with your wrap of wool, still tight, so don't, don't start um, doing a sloppy job here. Stay tight with the wool, but you are going to wrap, in effect, the whole of the body of the fairy with this lilac color wool. And that means that you are going to take quite a little bit of it because this is going to be uh, quite, a, quite a, um, a, um, this is probably the most wool that you will use to um, get this fairy dressed, basically. So you will also, and if you look at the fairy here, you're going to go down the leg a bit as well because what we want to do is we want to uh, give her sort of almost um, some quite quite um, strong legs, put it that way. So you can also go round the legs and have I missed a step? Where are my legs that are... Where's the other purple the legs oh maybe I should have oh I see okay this dark purple should I should have also wrapped the legs in that which I haven't done oh well she's gonna have very skinny calves now or maybe I should still do it okay so I didn't read my instructions properly um, so what I should have done is I should have used the next color light purple I forget these things I just do so many things um, they need to go on where above the feet because they're sort of like the the tights if you like and then she's got pants over the top it's really hard to see on the photo um that it's a different color so i'm just going to do that quickly just to the top of the leg here Get, um, i love this about needle felting because you if you, even if you go wrong you can always put it right and then you do this on the other leg so there are actually three colors of purple on that um on the leg of the fairy and so you're going to do, see, this is what happens when you wrap the opposite way to um, before. So I'm going to do this the other way around. I will start at the top and work my way down. She's very flexible, this fairy. 
So I've, I've, what I've done is I had to start wrapping the wool in the opposite direction because I was unwrapping the wool underneath it. So this is what you've just witnessed. Exactly what happens is that um, if you if you go in the opposite direction, it it can sometimes unravel the wool underneath it. Just need to put another little bit of wool on there to neaten it up. So just put another layer over it to straighten it out. And then I can continue with a step that I um, that I went ahead with un unintentionally. Sorry. Okay. Let's get rid of this here. Okay, now I'm going back to the lilac color purple. Now that I've added that layer here. So she's got slightly thicker calves now. If for whatever reason you've got a little bit of wool coming off, then just felt it down very gently. You don't want to stab it too deep because it just comes out at the other end. Just stab it down. If you can stab along the leg better still, because then you, you just stab the wool away in, in the leg rather than uh, coming out at the other end, the other side. And um, that's better. Here we go. Now I'm going to add more wool. I'm going to give her these nice, nice breeches. I think that's it's what what they are like breeches, so that they they cover the top of her thighs, and they're going all the way round her lower body, and then up again. And so what you can do now is you're going to have to felt down the wool um, with the tight wraps that that. That you still have to keep the wraps tight but you're going to struggle to just wrap her without felting so stab into the fairy but don't stab into the wire somebody said to me the other day that apparently and i hope this isn't true that you have to be careful what you say on on facebook now that you can't say the word s-f-t-a-b anymore but i really genuinely don't know what else to say because to me this isn't poking you're not poking Poking is different. Poking implies that actually if you poke, you bend your needle. Poking is like making making weird acrobatics with your needle. Not you personally, but your needle is doing acrobatics. I really don't think this is poking. This has to be considered as um, stabbing wool. And um, I really, really hope they're not going to stop me from saying that because it's just not, not right to call it something else. So the, the, the skill of needle felting is, is literally to stab the needle into wool and that is how you needle felt you can't there's no there's no other way around it really um right here we go so she's looking a lot more dressed now quite happy with her body shape but you can even now go further up the body because what you need to do is you need to give her arms a cover too so i'm going to go up the body start my wool up here and now I'm going to go round the one of the arms. So I'm going along the arm and I'm going to give her some sleeves. And they can be long or they can be three quarter or they can be short. You, you decide. But as it's a crocus fairy, I think she needs to be quite warm um, because it's still quite cold in February out there. And um, so maybe she does need to have long sleeves. And then go back up the arm so that you've got a place where you can tuck the wool away um, and the end away and then keep stabbing into it. So how has everybody been this week? Tell me, how have you found the first signs of spring? Have you found the first si signs of spring? Um, I certainly have and it's been quite lovely um, despite the, uh, the fact that I've been cooped up in, um, in an exhibition pool for two days out of um, seven days this last week um, but um, I can definitely feel there's spring in the air agree are you agreeing um, definitely lovely to get that feeling of um, of the end of winter which I think we're all desperately longing for and um, oh yes I haven't told you yet where I've been today so I'm gonna tell you that in a minute um, too mustn't forget in the meantime I will just let you catch up with your fairy making whilst I'm going back onto the big screen. So this is where the fairy is now. It just needs felting down quite a bit more around the top to tuck away 
the uh, wispy bits of wool here there and that's she's that way around and I'll show you um, how we neaten the neck up in a minute minute as well so let's have a look if there's anything else that I haven't um, that I meant to tell you that I haven't told you so let's I'm um, just having a quick look so next live streams let's talk about the next live streams it is of course a short month February is a short month 28 days this year um, so we are going to do the sub box unboxing um, on the um, on the 28th of February, which is a Tuesday. So you will see that um, literally on the day before the boxes are released and uh, you have in the box, you will have the, um, I'll tell you that in a minute. Then the following week, you can make along with me or um, I'll show you how to make the um, needle felted swan. This is a new kit. Please go and buy it from us on our website if you want to make exactly that swan. You even get a tiny little crown on top of the head. I, I, you can probably not see that, but you do get the wooden disc with it as well and, and the water, literally not water, it's wool for the swan to um, swim in. And then we've got the bunny fairy coming up already on the 14th of March. Oh my goodness, time is uh, rushing away. And uh, talking about the sub boxes for March, we've got the moon gazing hair um, as the main maker's box. We've got the surprise box, which is a make along. And I can tell you that the make along will be themed a uh, pink landscape. And then we've got the bunny fairy uh, as the fairy box. Now I need to tell you a change about our fairy boxes. So we are no longer going to pack the fairy boxes in this color box. We're going to go with the craft box color, which is the brown box color. I haven't got one here to show you right now. Well, I have, but I'll have to get up and show it to you. And the reason being is that these boxes, <laughs> oh, stuff, stuff them to full. Since we've done the fairies, we've actually, um, they've become bigger and bigger and bigger. We are really struggling to make those boxes, boxes look nice. And so we are going to go with the sl slightly sturdier um, craft boxes which fits with all of our kits as well, so it will look uh, more in line with um, the other stuff. The, 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 the sticker will remain the same, so you're just not going to have the blue frame on the outside. It'll be, it'll be um, the brown uh, recycled um, um, box look. Um, so that's uh, one of the changes. Um, I think also we might be celebrating a birthday. Are we? Yes, we're celebrating three years of the fairy box next month uh, with the bunny fairy. And um, so that's going to be uh, three years, I can't believe, three years, 36 fairies, one a month. That's um, quite an achievement. Have you made them all? Tell me, have you made them all? Um, would be good to know if you made them all. And uh, before I uh, chatter a little bit more, I'm just going to check in into the um, chat to see what's going on here. Um, so what have we got going on? Um, I actually have no idea how many people are watching, but hopefully lots of you are. Um, we have got, um, oh, Mac Mouse is now live. Yes, definitely. If you haven't seen him yet, Mac Mouse is our newest special edition mouse kit. Um, we've also got um, the round sheep. Super cute. Everybody loved that one at um, the recent trade show. Um, yeah, that, that I don't know if, I don't know if, um, I don't know. I don't know if, um, if, 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 if it's ready or not. Um, so we've got, um, everybody's talking about poking. I won't, won't pick up on that. I definitely get banned. Um, oh no, you've got a stinking cold, says Colette. I know that is definitely going round. Um, Diane found lots of snowdrops and the duffs are coming through. Nice. I like, I like that. Uh, Rosemary is here. Hello, Rosemary. Uh, my miniature daffodils are out. They're apparently they're called tater tay. I didn't know this until I bought a, a, um, a plant that said tater tay and I had no idea what they were until somebody pointed at the picture and said, they're baby, like mini little daffodils. And of course they are. Um, Lorna says, I've got snowdrops and spotted my first crocus and tiny daffodil. Oh, it's such a nice time of the year. We've been busy tidying up in the garden, says Gina. In the sunshine today, lots of bulbs coming through. Perfect. Um, oh, Diane, of course you've got the swan kit. Now, why doesn't that surprise me? Thank you, Diane. Always, always a loyal customer. Thank you. Um, so we have also got... Um, 
Oh, the Carol, of course you have made all, have you actually made all the fairies up until January? So you're just lagging behind a little bit, but you are making them all. Uh, Diane says, I've not made all the fairies, but I have made most and I have bought PDFs for the rest. Thank you for reminding um, me of that, um, Diane. Of course, you can catch up with all of the fairies because we have a, a huge library of uh, downloadable PDFs on our website as well. If you haven't spotted them, then please go and have a look because there might just be that one project that you really, really want to do. It doesn't always have to be a kit. The PDFs are there and you can um, you can uh, follow the instructions and it tells you exactly what you need for it as well. One thing that it reminds me of is also I should just um, say, let you say hello to my daisy cow again. My sweet little daisy cow. <laughs> I've seen very sweet little daisy cows that are yours, but I love my sweet little daisy cow. So sweet, look. Isn't she cute? <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to finish, uh, for this box to finish so I can have her permanently. She's just mine. <laughs> mine, mine, mine you are. I love my little daisy cow. Anyway, she's the sub box for this month. So if you want to make um, a very cute little daisy cow, not as cute as mine, but yours will be your cuteness. Mine is my cuteness. Um, then you have got time to get your subscription box. And the special thing about our subscription boxes now is that they can be purchased as a one off. So if you only ever like one project and nothing else after that, Fill your boots, just get the one-off box. Of course, you do save money if you are subscribing, but sometimes you don't want to save money because you just want that one box, and that's fine. Right, let's get back to the um, fairy at hand. And um, so I was going to show you how to neaten her neck up. And for this, you will need um, just a very thin strand of, um, of the color wool that you're covering her body with. And all you need to do is just wrap that really nice and tightly just below the head so that you make almost like a distinct part between the top of the shoulders and the head, which is obviously the neck. And then felt the wool down the end of the strand. And that will just neaten up the neck a little bit and make it more distinct from the rest of the body. And there's still, you've still got lots of this um, light lilac wool left. So if you want to make her a little bit more um, sturdy. Remember this one is a, um, I'm actually going to have to cut a bit of that toe, f uh, not toe, but the, the boot off because it's it's very much longer than the other part. There, uh, that needn't it up a bit. Um, you can make her, um, you can give her a bit more of a bum if you want. I, I do like that shape of the of the fairy where, where we're not covering everything with, with a skirt, where we're literally um, uh, letting her letting her show her legs and her her um, lower body. But um, the next step that we're doing is, and this is the first time we've done this, so this is a new technique. If you've never uh, done it before, we're going to give our fairy ears. And uh, they're little elf ears. It does give her quite a mischievous look. She, she, um, she definitely changes, sort of her whole attitude changes, and I think that's why she was hiding as well. But for this, you need the pink wool. Now, what I always suggest is if you're making two of something that is the same like two ears then always have two of the same quantity wisps already there because you'll never remember what you've actually done um, with the other one and so you basically you've got your little wisp of wool lengthways folded in half so that you've got to fold at the top then you're going to bend in one side slightly down and then the other side so that you've got a little triangle with fluffy bits at the end the fluffy bits are great to hold on to whilst you're stubbing the opposite end into that little triangular shape. Turn it round, stub it from the other side, just firm it up. So you're leaving the fluffy ends unfelted. This is how we do ears. We do the ears like that on animals, we do them like that on fairies as well. So just stub the, um, that part of the ear nice and flat. And I'm not, go I'm not going, um, I'm not stabbing very deeply because I don't want to just push the fibers through to the other end. I actually want them to get tangled up inside just that flat little piece of ear. And then you want to do that on the other one as well. Stay there. So fold it in half. So you've got the folded edge at the top. Then you fold one corner down, then the other corner down. Hold onto the wispy end. Only felt that triangular shape at the top. Just give it a few steps before you turn it round 
and then you turn it around a couple more times um, keep the needle quite uh, shallow as as you're um, stabbing it into the into the uh, wool so and and then you've got a second ear done so to fasten the ears on um, you might have too many wispy fibers so you can just tease a few off as long as you've got some they don't need to they don't need to be very long so tease some off so you should have two ears here that will now go onto the fairy like that obviously and the, the wispy fibers is uh, that we need we need those to fasten the ear on so you spread them out all the way around and then you attach the ear to the side of the head and just get it fastened on first don't worry too much which direction the ear is pointing just get it on so that you um, you can now work on the positioning of the ear because you want it to be sort of maybe slightly pointing up um, and you can also make it a lot lot smaller by stabbing along the ear so stab into the ear and um, and have it sort of slightly pointing up by manipulating the shape of it by stabbing into it and then repeat that on the other side it definitely changes the look of your fairy so make sure that you are happy with a with a uh, fairy with ears if not you can just leave the ears off it definitely gives her quite a sort of a mischievous elf like look like a bit of a a little bit of a trickster as as you've seen she was definitely hiding from me um, and I had to find her so she's been she's a bit of a she's a bit naughty that one but we need naughty fairies so make sure that both of the ears are the same so that they're at the same height and um, and this gives you another opportunity to felt down the face a little bit more if you are at a point where at the sh at a um, I, I fe probably felt it another part of the face down really well I completely forgot that um, which part I, I made look really nice again I love that about needle felting nothing's ever spoiled because you always have the opportunity to put things right so I've now got a fairy with ears there some good old ears there and um, and then what um, I think what I think we might do next is you're going to make the eyes. Now you've got a tiny, tiny bit of black. This is way too much um, to make the eyes, but um, you can make the eyes by um, taking a wisp, tiny wisp, tiny, 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 tiny. And our fairy has got closed eyes like she's enjoying the first ray of spring sunshine. So twist this in your fingers to make a little, a little um, strand. And then you've got to be quite careful felting this down make sure that you really just sort of tuck it in before you felt it down more because you want it to be in the right position alternatively you could actually use a fine liner that is what um what carol does and that's what i pinched from her um because um the mouth of the fairy will be um, drawn with a fine liner um, again you can use of course a tiny tiny bit of wool um or you don't have to give her a mouth um she can just be silent um, and then put the other eye in there as well. So less is definitely more when it comes to features on um, on the face. It, it really, really does not work if you make these features really big and um, it just it just is too much. It overwhelms the whole of the face. So be be mindful that you're giving your fairy very delicate little features. Um, if you don't like it, take it off and um, also try and have both of these eyes as much the same as possible so she's um, she's got closed eyes now a lot of the face gets softened when the hair gets attached but um, just to show you you can actually use a fine liner and give her a tiny little mouth by just drawing onto your um, wool there we go just make sure you don't go too big with that either so now she's got um, eyes and she's got a little mouth you could have done the eyes with a fine liner too. And uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to um, mix this fabulous sari silk, this yellow, with this cream coloured uh, wool. Um, so you, sari silk in, on its own doesn't felt very easily. It, it is prone to break your felting needle. So you, you, it's best to mix it with a little bit of wool so that the, the wool has got a chance to grip into it. 
And um, to mix it, you do, do it exactly how you always mix wool, is lay them on top of each other, but you really have to make sure you're teasing them apart, going always in the same direction and overlaying them in the same direction, because you do want those fibers to continue being long and running alongside each other. Um, if you find you've got too much there, then just take a bit off. Um, it, it's, uh, it, the color mix between the purple and the yellow is actually really, really realistic what um, this color crocus looks like. So once you've got a little batch mixed here, um, you're basically going to start felting this onto the, the side of the head of the fairy. You can mix it a bit better. You can add more of either of the colors into it. So if you, it's, it's your mix, you, you make the mix um, that you want. I think the more you mix it, the better. And I think the less silk um, you put in there, sari silk, the better too. So add a little bit more of the, of the wool. It makes look the hair a bit smoother and um, a bit more delicate. So I'm just add, but, but the sari silk, again, it adds a bit of, um, of a um, luster to it. So it's also really nice to have that in there. And there's some very dark bits running through it. So once you've got your desired mix, then you can um, take a bit. And now what you've got to do it, you've got to make sure that you split it to the front and the back of the ear. So split your strand. So you've got some running to the front and some, you want the ear to poke out. You don't want to cover the ear up. There's pointless why, um, you know, what's the point of making an ear if you're covering it up? And we're felting the wool down to frame the face. So make sure the ear sticks out. It's a little, little elf ear that needs to poke out from the hair and you can uh, style the hair um, of your fairy however you like um, the main thing is that you frame the face first so felt the wool down gently all around you might need three strands of hair so um, one on each side and then you can have um, one on the back as well um, so frame the face first. So I always do one side and then the other side. You've got so much hair um, wool here so that you, you probably, I don't even know if I need um, a third one. But I've got all this wool left over still. Look how much. This is, this is going to be a good, a good bit to put in your stash. Um, as we always try and do, have, have a little bit extra for your stash. That's, that's probably nice to have some extra. Right, so felt it down on the other side of the head as well and and if you um, if you can you can use it to cover the back as well I mean you don't want the hair to to be too long at the back because she's gonna have to have wings as well and um, we don't want the hair to cover up the wings so give her 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 nice little hairstyle and if you want to you can cut the hair shorter so it doesn't have to stay long make sure it's sort of frames the face but not covers it because that would be a shame too and it also allows the ear still to stick out you can give her a fringe if you if you want um just felt it down so that is sort of the base of the fairy done um i actually like her better than this one she has a softer expression doesn't she what do you reckon i don't know this is obviously the naughty one um, so if you want to, you can cut the, um, the, the hair short. But uh, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to dress her. Now for this, you will need your strip of um, felt. Um, you can probably cut up to... Um, if, if, you're, if you are economic with your um, felt, you can probably get nine petals out of this. Now I haven't. I you would probably um, make a separate template, which I haven't done. So I'm just going to wing it, as I um, what I'm also very good at. So I'm actually going to start cutting this now. Um, without this might go hideously wrong. Don't do this if you don't feel confident. I'm just going to make a petal shape out of this. That'll do. And then we've got to make a smaller one. So that's my template now. I'm going to use that and cut. Why am I using the worst scissors on the planet? Where are my nice scissors? That's what I want to know. I have no idea, actually. Oh, my scissors found. 
excellent my little label scissors so I'm just going to cut quickly three of this size petals so I've made myself a template um, first out of felt by just winging it if you need to use the paper um, to make a template then please do that don't wing it and then waste your felt pieces and the way I do it is I just literally cut uh, a big enough um, shape here and then shape it around the petal. I'm going to have to wing the small size as well in a minute. And that's three now. And four. Okay. And I've got all this rubbish here now as well. Put that away. And then I've got, yeah, you definitely get loads of petals out of this piece. So that's good. Yeah. So what I want to show you is, and you will have, you can use, um, you can have small and large petals because ideally, when you look at a pop, when you look at a poppy, no, don't look at a poppy. When you look at a um, a crocus, they've 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 sort of got um, large, small, large, small, alternating. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make my one of the large petals into a small one now. So that is my template for the small petal, and um, and then I can uh, just add a couple of these with a, making a small one. Okay, this is this is is all. Um, a bit um, I'm rushing this at the end you can you might get to this petal shape in a different way the main thing is that you now have to needle felt onto these little petals because crocus petals are not never just a single plain color so you are going to use um, the dark purple which you used for the feet remember that and you're going to um, felt two curved lines onto the petal shape so you can do this in really in a really small way and you're going to start at the top and then you're just felting it down so that it's slightly curved now this has has two effects it makes the um, petal shape look more 3d but it also literally curves it whilst you're stabbing into it because it brings the petal shape sort of slightly in and then you're going to um, do the second line and um, and that gives it um, um, sort of a 3D look, and the and the the shape determines the shape of the of the petal and makes it look more natural. So they have these sort of sh two curved lines that might be going uh, on there, um, and then do this on the others as well. Keep it really keep it really thin that um, that um, curved line, and just go in a sort of consistent stab 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 around in that curve you probably use too much you realize you use too much and then just the next ones just use less and then once once you've done three then you're gonna start dressing your fairy because you can actually dress her in all kinds of ways you don't have to dress her the way that I dressed my fairy here where she's got um, sort of a top bit covering and then a bottom bit covering. You can just have the skirt or you can, um, and I haven't put the skirt around the back, but you can put it around the back too. It doesn't have to be, because you can, I think you can, I, can, I think I speak with confidence that you can get at least nine petals out of that. Look, I've got that much left over and I've made one, two, three, four, five, six, can probably get 12 out of there um, if you if you cut it very economically so then you could have a whole little little um, a whole little featured skirt going on there so and to um, to dress your fairy you just you just um, always make sure that um, so I've got the big one here in the middle the big petal felt that down where the pointy end is into the fairy and then you're going to put the other two around the edge. And because the, the, the um, petals are sort of slightly curved, they do want to come up like a little um, upside down bell, um, exactly how you would expect. Is that a big one or a small one? No, it's a small one. 
um, like you expect a, um, a crocus to be because it's like an upside down bell isn't it it has the cup like that rather than that upside down so that's exactly what um, you're doing with um, with the dressing of the fairy so have it sort of slightly coming up like like an open crocus you can do more at the at the top or just go all the way around to have several layers however you fancy doing it just dress your little fair, fairy so that you've always got three um, of the petals sort of side by side and then the final thing that I will show you is you need to use the acetate paper and the wing that's printed on it so you're going to cut around the shape make sure you do this in good light because the um, uh, but you're not cutting the two sets apart so you need to keep the paper connecting the two sets of wings so what I would do is because you can cut in between the two wings um, on one side in a minute just get the outline cut out make sure you've got the bit in the middle connecting it because that is where you're going to glue it to um, onto the fairy so you don't want to separate the wings and in a minute we can cut the um, the pair of wings a little bit so this part stays connected okay don't cut in the middle but you can um, separate the wings here a little bit by cutting into it and you really I mean I'm struggling to see it in this light so make sure you've got look good light but these wings are now slightly separate and then do the uh, do it on the other side as well so that you've got these a little bit more separate there that's it and then all you've got to do is put the hair out of place so you could cut the hair um, if it's too long take your glue bottle add a generous dab of glue on the back like this like a little piled up poo, poo pile but it's glue it's a glue pile not poo and then add it to the back of the fairy and let it dry now this this has been glued on in exactly the same way and it's absolutely solid this is what this glue is like this glue is amazing look you can't see where it's been glued on in and and it it literally i mean i could pull it off if i was really really mean but who pulls fa fairy's wings off that i mean that is outrageous to start with so make sure that you keep um it it just leave it in that spot don't touch it just be patient and then once um it's dried your fairy is all done and i'm going to show you her um here in the front camera now so this is what i've just made little fairy the wings are still drying she's got um definitely got a determined look but i think right now she's basking in the first spring sunshine so um yeah this is this is um what you can be doing with your crocus fairy and if you love purple this is a perfect perfect project for you because it doesn't go any more purple three choices of purple how amazing is that so that's all about the crocus fairy um i've nearly been doing it for an hour i get quite good at uh, cutting this to the exact time um let's have a look if i've got anything else i need to tell you oh yes craft for crafter workshop so we're going to west point um in exeter on the 30th of March, um, 31st of March and April the 1st. So you can come and join us um, at our stand and we will teach you how to make a toadstool house, um, a fox cup or even set you off with um, our new seascape picture which is actually A4 so that's the size of a of a notepad, of a big notepad and um, you can you can um, make start, start it out with a kit. We start you off so that in case you're a little bit nervous starting it, we'll do that with you as part of the workshop. And then you take the kit and everything home and you finish it off on your own. The other two projects, you should be able to do it from beginning to end with us. Um, and, um, and then I also just wanted to remind you, if you enjoyed um, seeing this free tutorial that um, obviously you can get um, here on Facebook, but also on our YouTube channel, then do show us your appreciations. Give us your thumbs up. Tell your friends to sign up for our uh, to our YouTube channel. Um, and if you are watching this on Facebook, you can also give us stars. And the, the stars are a uh, show your appreciation. They're just a little thank you to us um, 
that you appreciate it, that we are putting our time into, um, into the free tutorials. Um, it's, it's, it's entirely voluntary, but um, we do put a lot of work into this, notwithstanding that we always have to use a lot of materials to make extra sets of fairies. However, um, on that note, I'm sure that we will be updating our adopt to make um, section soon because <laughs> we've always got spares. So if you um, fancy one um, one or two of our of our projects that often have been made during a workshop or a live stream, then you can purchase those at a very at, nomin at a very nominal um, cost price. Um, I think that's all I had to say. Um, we've covered the next sub boxes. Um, yeah, we've still got stock in the clearance um, on our clearance side. I think we're going to take that all out soon and take it with us to shows. So you might be able to grab a bargain there. And I'm just going to ha have a very quick look at um, who is um, still here. Make sure you like um, this live stream. However you like it, just give us the thumbs up or press like or or whatever. Do, do let us know that... Um, that you are there and uh, watching it and um, never uh, forget to share what you've made with us here on uh, social media. So it's um, Facebook, tag us, themakers.co.uk, that's our handle, find us. Um, on Instagram, the makers, and on um, Twitter, the same. And of course, our YouTube channel, if you type in um, the makers UK, it should take you directly to our channel. And um, you can also join our Facebook group, which is called Everyone a Maker. All we're asking that you are not um, self-promoting or um, that, that you're just there because you want to enjoy what we are doing and sharing. You can share with us what you're doing with the makers, materials, ideas, products, books, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, and we ask you to agree to those um, group rules. And that's, I think, all I've got to say. I hope you have a lovely remainder of an um, evening, day, morning, week, month, year, life, um, whenever you're watching this and however you're watching this. And I will see you next week with um, the unboxing, would you believe it, of the March boxes. So take care, everybody. Lots of love. Bye. Oops. Not that one. <laughs> Still bye.